am standing in a maize field next to a beautiful maize crop which is headed towards senescence maturity. Thank you Zimbabwe for tuning in to yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agriculture on New Directions, Agribusiness, and my name is Wadzanae Manyore. The reason why I am in a maize field today is because we are going to be having a field day pertaining to cropping enterprises right here in Zimbabwe. We are going to be looking at issues surrounding crop protection because we have pests and diseases which are a nuisance in cropping ventures which also threaten the food security here in Zimbabwe. We are talking of becoming an upper middle class economy by yet 2030 and one way we can do that is through uh, ensuring that everyone has access to food which is the pillar of food security. Accessibility to food stuffs for each and every citizen in Zimbabwe. Now, as you can see, Zimbabwe, most of our Zimbabwean farmers rely on agricultural experts and gurus and various technological advancements in order to ensure that they remain relevant in the agricultural industry. We are talking of precision farming, we are talking of new chemical advancements, new fertilizers that can enhance production and productivity being reiterated by our permanent secretary in the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Red Development, right here in Zimbabwe, Dr. John Basera. He's also always emphasizing on the issues surrounding productivity and production. To discuss this and more in this episode, we are going to be listening to various speeches and various guests who are going to be uh, gracing our platform in terms of co-production. Stay tuned. At this point in time, I have taken the liberty of inviting the guest of honor who managed to officiate this event, Dr. Clyde Mujaju. He is the Director of Research Services Department right here in Zimbabwe in the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Road Development. Dr. Mujaju, I welcome you to our platform. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you officiated this event. Your sentiments on events like these ones, field days whereby the farming community converges and interacts with agricultural stakeholders. Yeah. Th thank you so much. Um, just to bring you into perspective, this event or events like this one, they provide a platform through which farmers from all walks of life come together and then learn how technologies are being used and also learn how the mixes of different technology like uh, pesticides, yes. varieties, and uh, also herbicides work together to bring a reasonable yield for a farmer. Okay. So that our farmer, even after that yield, can then have food security and nutrition security. Okay. Through which can also get a livelihood out of that through selling because there is enough to see if you were there you could see that there is a uh, a bump harvest that is expected to come out of these demos yes. and if our farmers can mimic exactly what we saw in the demos i tell you as a country we will be standing with his excellence the president and we will be meeting the ambitions that our president has in terms of having a country that is self-sufficient in okay. terms of food. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mujaju. Moving right along, I want us to talk about, we have our policies in the Ministry of Lands Agriculture, where we are talking of the Agricultural Recovery Plan. We also have issues whereby they encourage production and productivity. You are the head, the director in the research department. How do you think field days are going to enhance or uh, also add on to the policies of our government? Thank you so much for that question. One thing that uh, the country should know, or all of us should know, is that uh, um, as the government and the ministry, we are championing agricultural recovery and growth plan, which is aimed to bring the whole country to a state where we have food and nutrition security in mm -hmm. the country. And field day like this, they provide that platform where our farmers can adopt the best technologies that are provided in our country. Yes. And these are on local technologies. We have companies that are manufacturing local fertilizers. We have companies that have varieties that adapt to our local conditions. We know that we have got climate change in our country. But these varieties, they do well. They can stand the harsh effects of climate change 
as you can see, if you look at them, even yourself, you will marvel. Yes. And we are simply saying, in support of our president or in support of our ministers of agriculture and all those who have the desire to see our country moving on, let's adopt such technologies and we adopt the fertilizer usage, we adopt the usage of the varieties that we have seen. If we do that as a country, I tell you, our farmers will be smiling from home to the bank and will be smiling, you know, all over. Yes. We can then tell you what, we can meet the vision 2030 that our president desires of us. Thank you so much, Dr. Mujaji. They heard viewers, Dr. Mujaji here was saying that if we manage to adopt to these climate smart varieties, we'll be smiling all the way to the bank. At this point in time, I am joined by Dr. Dondo Sema. He is the Director of Agriculture Education in the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Road Development, Russia in Zimbabwe. Dr. Dondo Sema, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Waza. Yes, as we get into our discussion, these events, these field days, how do they enhance or add on to the new curricula in, uh, in your department? Thank you so much, Waza, for this opportunity. The new curricula developed and launched in the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural Development, being hosted by the Department of Agricultural Education, resonates well with what is happening here or what has happened here feeds well in the implementation of the new curriculum. Okay. The new curriculum has five basic pillars where we have training, we also have advisory, business advisory services, okay. we have the component of research, we have uh, the component of industrialization and the last fifth pillar is the entrepreneurship which is broken into two parts where we need the college to commercialize and manage to produce and sustain itself where we emphasize production productivity and profitability so we are saying this advisory service component is being spelled out clearly within these uh, research demonstration plots and the field days the students have also learned and even staff members and the general populace have learned how farming as, as a business should be done. Okay. The research component assists us, which is being done in these demonstration plots. Yes. It assists the students to use the best technology, to use the best fertilizer, to use the best seed, to do all the management aspects required by the plant to get the maximum yield. Okay. Thank now, you, Dr. Domrosema, finally, as we round off, if you look at SDG number 17 on the UN Agenda Vision 2030, it speaks of partnerships, even though they talk about them on a global level. We are here in Zimbabwe, in our country. How can partnerships be used to ensure that we achieve Vision 2030 and also achieve NDS1? First of all, creation of these triple Ps facilitates breaking of silos. Okay. Operation of the private sector on its own and operation of public sectors on their own. Private and public partnerships brings us together and share a lot of things which are key or a lot of resources which are key to maximum production so that we get to food, nutrition, security. Okay. From the private sector, we have those skills. They bring in the skills, they bring in or they complement the financing aspect, they complement even those motivational speeches they give or resource lectures. They come okay. with them at the institution so we can share bearing testimony of what is happening out there and how to build that sense of business mindness within our students. So they assist in creating a new mindset okay. towards farming as a business so that our learners they don't only feel or seek employment after the training okay. they can also feel for becoming employers trying to emulate what is happening in the private sector so the private sector is also complementing government efforts and policies strategies towards attainment of vision 2030 thank you so much dr dondo sema it was a pleasure having you with us today thank you Waza. good day yes
Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. Today, we are talking of crop protection and productivity in our various cropping ventures. Now, viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with me, the producer, Wadzanae Manure, on 0772 807 506. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wadzanae. Leave your comments and suggestions on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wadzanae. We are also now available on Twitter. And our Twitter handle there is at Agribusiness. 110. At this point in time, I've taken the liberty of inviting Mr. Moses Kudanga. He is an agronomist here in Zimbabwe. He is working with farmers and various stakeholders in our agricultural industry. Moses, I welcome you on this program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Wazanai. Yes. As we get into our discussion, Moses, as you can see behind us is a field of a healthy looking crop which is weed free, which is disease free. What are some of the products that were used and how did they perform along the season from planting up to here where we are seeing maturity senescence? Okay, thank you Azanai. Um, as, as we know that farmers, uh, we need to come in first, like the first thing is we need to do soil analysis, then we get the recommendation. So we need to come in with lime. So we come with lime so that we, we correct the soil pH. Then thereafter we need to come in with a basal dressing and we need to have been recommended to the correct application rate of um, the basal dressing which we need to apply uh, well before planting or else we use a planter that will uh, place the fertilizer first then come in with seed on top because for basal dressing we need to make sure that the fertilizer is, is applied first under the, 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 the seed so that uh, at least we need to cover the, the, this fertilizer before we come in with a, with a seed. Okay. Because failure to do that, we, we, we then mix seed and fertilizer, we tend to have problems of germination, problems of emergence, because the fertilizer tends to burn uh, the seed. But in this case, uh, what we did, we came in with fertilizer with a planter that uh, placed fertilizer first, then came in with seed, then after that, um, after three weeks of emergence, uh, we then came in with the top dressing. Okay. We did the, uh, the application top dressing. Then we did the second top dressing at the 10th leaf stage. That was towards tasseling, just before tasseling. Okay. Then uh, that's where we have our crop uh, as good as you see it. Thank you so much, Moses. I want us to talk about weed management. You would see that here in Zimbabwe, most of our Zimbabweans lose many, uh, a lot of yield or many uh, tons due to proper or uh, and even management of weeds. Let us talk about weed management in maize production. Weed management in maize production is key was an eye. And uh, as I have moved around Zimbabwe, we found that most of our farmers failed much to attain the higher yields uh, because of failure to do with management. So at the first place, like we said, we did the soil analysis that will tell you the, the soil texture that will then determine the the, fertilize, the, the the herbicide that you need to come in and use okay. because you need to come in with a, a pre-emergence herbicide. But then for pre-emergence herbicide, the, the rates are determined by the, the soil texture. So that means the finer soils will then need higher rates of um, um, uh, herbicides. Okay. So you need to come in and apply soon after you plant your, your crop. But you have to make sure that uh, the soil has to be moist. When the soil is dry, uh, the herbicide won't, won't be very effective and you won't manage to control the, 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 the weeds. Okay. So you need to make sure that it's either you plant when it's dry, but soon after you should get some rain showers or you come in with, to incorporate the herbicide with irrigation. Once you do that, you are sure that the maize will emerge or germinate without any competition from weeds. Therefore, you start attaining the, 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 the true characteristic of, a, of, a, of your hybrid because it won't be disturbed by any of these weeds, weed seeds or what so forth. So by so doing, you make sure you have achieved a, a goal. But well, we come to some, there are some herbicides which are broad spectrum. They can control quite a large, um, uh, a various amount of weeds in the, in the soil. Then we have some herbicides which are specific. So it, if you use a herbicide which is broad spectrum as a pre-emergence, that will be an advantage. But somehow it will miss some, some, some weeds in the crop. Okay. Then you need to come in with a, a, an early post-emergence herbicide, which is very key as well. But, well, we don't encourage our farmers to rely only on 
post emergency herbicide because already the loss will be will, will have already incurred uh, by the weeds in the in the in during the that early stage of growth. Okay. So what's key is the farmers need to come in as a supplementary with um, with a, an early post emergency herbicide that will be selective that will control the specific weeds which will be in the field. For example, we have some some weeds like shamba grass, which is a, a, a challenge to most of the pre emergency herbicides. So we then need to come in with a with a, 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 a post emergency herbicide that can take care of the shamba grass. We also have uh, nut sage, which is also a problem uh, in most most farmers in most farms in Zimbabwe so we also need to come in with a, a post emergency herbicide that targets that specific weed okay thank you so much Moses we spoke of fertilizer application after soil analysis and soil tests and we also touched on our weed control these two things are very important for our farmers to understand so that they are successful in their cropping enterprises can we talk about the relationship of chemicals and fertilizers the combination okay like I said before as an I uh, the time of application of the fertilizers usually I said basal dressing has to be done before planting or okay. at planting but then the herbicide of course we have some herbicides which can be planted which can be applied before planting they are the pre-plant incorporated herbicides then you have the early pre-emergence herbicide that you need to come in and apply after you've planted you've applied your fertilizers then you come in with the herbicide before the emergence of the weed and the crop Okay. Then we then come in with the post-emergence herbicide, then which will then come uh, after the emergence of weed, after the emergence of the crop. That has to be well. All of them should be selective because we have selective and non-selective of these. So we have to be very careful when we address when we address this to our farmers. And in addition to that, it's not only the weed control, the nutrition. We also need to talk about the insect insect control of course we know in zimbabwe most breeders they breed our maize hybrids against a lot of diseases okay. so that's managing a lot of diseases so we find in zimbabwe we don't have m many problems which which will then need a farmer or require a farmer to come in with with a, a, a disease control mechanism uh, later on but the pests or insects are becoming a menace especially for armyworm okay. so we really need to manage that as well because if we manage our, our weeds, if we do nutrition, but we don't care about the insects, then we then uh, face the same similar loss that we could have faced if you didn't weed. Of course, weeds uh, can cause a, a greater havoc or greater losses compared to insects and diseases, but then we need to make sure we cater for everything so that we have a cleaner crop, a cleaner yield, a cleaner harvest. Then the farmers should go all the way smiling to the bank. Thank you so much, Moses. I like that she emphasized on farmers smiling all the way to the bank. But that is if a farmer also engages with agronomists and does the good agronomic practices that is being told by his original or area agronomists. There you had it viewers, we're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. At this point in time, I've taken the liberty of inviting Elizabeth Mukosho Musimi. She is a female agronomist in the agricultural industry right here in Zimbabwe. It is very encouraging to see women in particular taking leading roles in our agricultural sector because we want to address issues in our economy such as food security and also unemployment. Women are the pillars of our economy. Elizabeth, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Wadza, for having me. Yes. Uh, we are standing in front of a healthy-looking crop mm -hmm. which you managed to establish. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe take us through the steps how can any farmer in Zimbabwe also emulate you and the steps and the uh, ingredients that we might say when you are cooking but in agriculture mm. maybe the fertilizers the chemicals that you used in order to establish such a uh, such a beautiful crop thank you so much words like you rightfully say this is a very healthy looking crop and what we encourage our farmers to do initially is to do a soil test because you know when it comes to maize production you need to make sure that your nutrients are actually there in the right balances and then when you apply them, that the plant can be able to up, to take them up and be able to give you the 
such healthy looking cobs. Yes. So now uh, the first thing that we did on this land is that we actually sent the soils for soil testing and then from there we actually had to do the recommendations. We had to put calcitic lime on this land because the soil was acidic. So you know when you put in the, the, the lime you help to raise the pH and when the pH is at the right level you will have the nutrients become more available to the um, to the crop and thus you'll find that the crop can be able to take up the nutrients and actually be able to give you the yield that you're looking for so the first step that I would say the farmer should look out for is to make sure they send their soils for analysis I know we keep saying this but it is a critical critical stage that farmers should um, actually look out for and be able to uh, get the bamba harvest that we're looking at today okay thank you so much Liz moving right along you spoke of soil analysis and soil tests can you maybe enlighten our audience there at home after your soil analysis and your soil test what were the recommendations and what fertilizers did you eventually use the nutrients that you applied in order to ensure that the cobs come out looking this good and healthy so what we did was and i is we we're looking at getting a 10 ton crop which is like a very good uh, yield generally okay. in zimbabwe and so we came in with our nitrogen the nitrogen basically is uh, usually the recommendation is based on the target yield so what okay. yield do you want to get and so we came in with the nitrogen units that are required in our best of fertilizer that we chose was cereal blend and we also chose cereal blend because there was a bit of um we had issues with potassium and also phosphorus so we wanted to build up those uh, those two nutrients so then we chose cereal blend which is called the npk 62323 the zinc level as well in the soil was low and zinc is critical to build the, the it's it's part of enzymes it okay. helps with what we call auxins which are also hormones yes. Yes. growth hormones i know like they say ladies have got hormones <laughs> but crops have got hormones as, as well, well. Yes. and they need the hormones to be able to give you the bamba harvest so the zinc is what we're looking for in the city of blend and we came in with the best of fertilizer and it was at a rate of 350 kgs per hectare that's what we put in here and then we came in with a top dressing which is our urea and our urea was coming in in two splits and also like i said before um we are looking at the target yield so we had to split it um so that we apply the we we have sufficient nitrogen throughout the growth stages so that the crop can be able to build up the yield as the season goes so basically those are the two main fertilizers that we used on top of the calcium night uh, the calcitic line that i spoke about earlier okay that was very detailed Liz. and i understand most of our zimbabwean farmers are taking notes because you spoke of nutrients and elements that are important for growth in crops mm. uh, moving right along Liz, i want us to talk about major yield drivers the program is called agribusiness in support of vision 2030 mm. eventually a farmer wants it to translate to profit mm. wants it to translate to money yes. you want to get the right return mm. per dollar invested mm. What are the major yield drivers in crop production? So the first thing is, I think every agronomist says this, that farming is a business. So yes. you have to make sure that as you're putting in the ear, the, the inputs, um, the nutrients, the chemicals, that you get a good return on the investment that you're actually um, embarking on. So the first thing is to make sure that whatever decision that you're making is going to reflect on your dollar at the end of the season. Yes. And so that's why we started off talking about a soil test report. Many people don't really understand that at times it can actually save you money because when you do a soil test report your at times your soil has got enough nutrients in certain areas that are actually available so you don't have to put in as much as you would if you didn't know that okay. the nutrients are in there okay and then the other thing is also it's it's a combination of things it's like um, um i don't know it's like gears um you know they have to work together for you to be able to get the end result which is the motion of the car yes. so in as much as we talk of the nutrients which are through fertilizers we have to make sure that the other driver is a chemical crop protection as you can see here our land is very clean and so so it's important to keep the, the land weed free. Very it's true. important to make sure that the, the water is sufficient. This was a rain-fed crop with a bit of challenges, but also because it was well fertilized, it's got a bit of resistance to, you know, it can tolerate, not really resistance, but it can tolerate drought a bit better when it's well fertilized as compared to, you know, a, a, a okay. crop that's not, that's poorly fertilized. Okay. So those are the main things. So I'd say uh, your fertilizer, of course, and then chemicals, and then we talk of things like the water, which are the critical, critical, um, drivers of getting such a bamba harvest. Okay, Liz, as we round off this segment, uh, basic agronomic practices in general, we spoke of chemicals, we spoke of water, we spoke of fertilizer regimen application. Can we now talk about general management? The farmer, what does he need to do in terms of management? Time of application, wasn't I? 
a farming is a game of planning. Yes. You have to plan your, your farming enterprise. You have to know when you're planning your first crop. If you're going to come in with a second crop or a third crop, you have to know the time of planting. And you have to be on time. That's the first thing. Uh, you'll find that if you plant late, you start losing yield already. That's a management thing. It's got nothing to do with the fertilizer. It's got nothing to do with the genetics. Just make sure that you're planting on time. Okay. That's the first, I think if I have to say one thing, <laughs> that's the one thing that I would emphasize because I've actually realized that farmers don't really understand. And also understand your microclimate. Okay. Understand your farming region. Don't just choose a variety because my next door neighbor or like my relative from across the uh, country did well with that variety. Make sure you understand the variety that does well in your area, in your microclimate. Thank you so much, Liz. There you had it, viewers. Liz is telling us you do not have to necessarily reinvent the world. A lot of work has already been done. Research has already been done. You also have to do a work study. Understand the climatic region that you are in so that you are successful in your cropping ventures. Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agriculture on New Directions, Agribusiness. We are at a field day that is emphasizing on crop protection, how to manage our cropping ventures here in Zimbabwe. At this point in time, I've taken the liberty of inviting Diana Saungweme. She is a female farmer farming in Mvurwi. Diana Ndokuchigami Zapachirongwa. Ndanzu wawuti muri murimi, murukuri miramuri kumvurwi. Murukuri mapakakura sei, uye murukuri machi. Shafiti anga ini ndinori machi bagi. Saka chibage, chandu nori ima, chandu nori ima between 6 to 8 hectares, se chibage. Ndo sori mashakare ma sunflower. Ndo ri mashakare 8 hectares, se ma sunflower. Saka ndo shun chandu nori ima, chandu nori mfuru. Eh, eh. Zaka na kiro ochi kuti muno ochi zimai, muno ochi zimai, anga chui wakuma field day. Maita basa ni mfu nzo enyo. Che kutanga, chandu nori kukuri zirao, vaya basa tifatu mbotanga wa kuno nzi kurima. Chaka nakira field day. Field day yaka nakira kutu unowa na zidziso yaka kwana. Unowa na saruzo yaka kwana kufakuma chemicals, kufakuma fertilizers, kufakuma ma seeds. Aunga shandise uye nekuku netweka. Nevanu waunufano ngo uchibata na nao kuti iwe uzova a successful farmer. Saka ntinoti madzimai. Uya itiri mene kuti tundula kuzokira pae paka nzi musha mukazi. Eee. Inini ndino biliva kutika na musha uri mukazi. Mukazi uya urime. Uya uzize. Field day. Yaka nakira isusu madzimai. Nekuti ndisu mamamba acho ndisu tunula kuto zibape kuto tangira. Nepe kuto gumira. Technology acho inufana kuto tuwana tava hapo. Tiri panjimbo. Atidu kusara kumashure. Saka tunukuri zira madzimai wese wa garaba chirima. Kuti we are eating these jakawanda. We are eating these new technology. We are eating these new varieties. Tino zinzugira zvese kuma field days. We are eating these networking chayo. Tino zinza kuma field days. Tino zinza pa pa tino resha pa tino gona neku improve goredu. Do pa tino kuri zira na kuti ngatu we are field day. Do not end as kuru dera ne masho kwa kwe kuru zero. Se kutora kwa orukuita ingwa e networking. Paris no tato zivana. Dagzo adi kumvuru guna Diana. Chato zoyad zimungwa chibasirana mnyadi zekuri maiz. There you heard it, viewers. On that note, we are gonna cross over and listen to more testimonials from our Zimbabwean farmers who will be emphasizing the importance of attending field days. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. Today we are talking of crop protection in agriculture. Paris, you know, Ndinababa Shem Chinete, Murimi, Varkurimira, Kungweru, Pamweche Tene Kumvurwi. Vachinete Ndino Kuchingamiza Ipachirongwa. Tino Kutenda Iskuru Kuepa Nupachirongwa, sister. Eh, eh. Vachinete, Ngatita Ure Inenya Yadzeema Fertilizer Ne Mishonga, Jamuru Kutitiskwa Ne Varimisi. Zatiri kutitiskwa ne urumende, ne madumene urumende agritex. Muru kuzuona sayi, zatiri kutitiskwa ne zamuru kunoita. Zuri kusanga na ere, mago waru kubuda ere, mariru kubatika ere. Thank you so much. Ndinoona kuti elia on taant shingori ma in darkness. But ne ziziso iriko iko zinezi. Madumene wano tibese la kuti type ye vora tino shandisa. Rino pinda type ye fertilizer ipi. Elia on ta ingo tichero hiri fertilizer tirukudira. Eee. Asino kutako kuti awa inyanzi wano zi zaguti vura kati ino pinda fertilizer kati. Mbeo ya kati ino pinda fertilizer kati. Zuri kuti betsera no kutako kuti goredu rino riri kukwira kuva. Pata ino itaka tangira tichenda mberi. Eee. Hati siri makare aya ya kuti tirungori mamurima. Astane chiedza. Ma technological advancements ya aru kukubasira ipapi uye sei. Uh, tinotenda zikoro, 
ta makare kare tai timunda uno gona utozara kana ane wanu 200 eh, wa chisakura choko hadi eh, zaiti kostira a lot of money in terms of kufida wani iwa hao kukwani sakuwa handla is ma, staff is staff asiko zinezu ukaita a few people wane machinery tino kwani saku sakura ni ma chemicals zisinga tirwazi and to cover hectare jiakakura within a short space of time. Whereas, take makarita iti akurukuna ya nas, saka togo na opeza sondo yese tisina chataita. Petino zo tanga, mbeo ininge ya ato afektwa nesora, nechekare, kama yeah. nebundo nechekare. Asiko zune zune technological advancement ya tina, tika spray ya nas, zune lewa guti mwaka wese uyu. Ndigere, ndigere, eh. nda kutongo tarira chete kuti ah, mbe yangu hili kukura say at what rate. Eh. And at the same time, ma fertilizers ataa kushandi saiko zino. Zasiana ne kare, ne na kare, kata hii tituku shandi sa fertilizer, kati tituku shandi sa fertilizer, kati. Asita anti sina guideline, eh. ye kuti tine shandi sa say fertilizer hacho. Tine shandi sa at what stage. Eh. But iko zine, we are now well equipped in terms of knowledge, knowledge through wa uh, remisredu wa noti shanyira wa chiti pama guidelines wa chiti correct apetino rasika eh dinoti enda shukuru wa chinete muku pendera chiru ongwa dimima wa guest wedu wa kupezi sira mashuko wa mkata ura ya kuru zero kuwa rimibariku nsogo mkuimbika chini usha kakosha kana tini muku rima tika weti na uimbika guti Tinofana kutu uimbika kumbe ucha hiyo e. ya tina yo on the ground. E. Kuti waipa hereza inoda, za inota risira. Ika jigazwa kakwana, iwogo rako richawe rino, rino, rino be sereka, rino e. muru kira pa msoro. Asiwa jinji wedu tanti chifunga kuti, ah nas, mba muna sauti. Rega indi visa two bags, ndono tenga sauti. Asiwa uzi kuti, pawa visa hapa, pawa kamura hapa. Mangwana pacha kwa afekta. Ehe. Hausi murimi ukanga ushidaro. Ehe. Tiku dawari imi wari more serious. Kuti, zwata piwa nasi. Ndo zwaticha shandisa. Nemwero wazo kwazo kwazo. Zuno tipa ozo kare kutitiwa nechi. Tunduzo mukurima. Ndo zuno tisi mzira senyika. Ndino tenda shukuru ni uh, wachine tene kunge muri pachirongwa neso. Tinotenda skoro. There you heard it viewers. This is Mr. Chinete. He is a farmer who is also farming in Mvuma as well as Gweru. Thank you for joining us. There you heard it viewers. This field day was anchored on crop protection. Now if you want to talk about it and discuss it in depth, you would find that crop protection is not only for protecting crops. It goes on further to speak on protection of yourself as the farmer, your employees, and even the customers who are going to be consuming those foodstuffs. Us as farmers, we are the anchors of the Zimbabwean economy. We produce so that the nation is well fed. And as we move away from food security, we will eventually attain food luxury where we will be exposed Exporting food products that are suitable for the export market. For me, what's the name Manure? I'm also on Instagram. It's a W Manure. And the crew behind the scenes, have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.